What's up, Ron here, and today you're gonna learn how to use dry brush. What's up, Liron here. Thank you for joining me in another video. First of all, I just want to wish you a fantastic 2019. May all your wishes come true. Uh, I wish you lots of health and happiness and success and new experiences and uh, new artistic experimentation and all the best, really. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Before we get going with the video, just wanted to uh, show you, I have here a lot of different sketches from the last few days. I just like to put something back there that you can at least look at and enjoy as I talk. Um, so today we're gonna talk about dry brush. Again, a topic that uh, I've been asked about a lot recently. Um, and what I think I'm gonna do is divide this lesson into several parts. So first, a little introduction, what it is, definition. Then what I wanna do is show you some of my paintings that have usage of dry brush and show you the practical application of it and then we're going to do a quick demo and I'm going to talk to you about all the different factors and subset of skills that you need to learn in order to really master dry brush technique okay so with that being said we're going to start with a simple definition so dry brush as the name suggests is painting with the brush when the paint to water ratio is in favor of paint so there's a lot of paint in the brush less water and that allows for lines to be broken and less prominent uh, and thus conveying a very interesting effect in my opinion it allows you to it gives you another way of bringing your vision to life okay it allows you to create lines that are less prominent that are more suggestive that are more in the background and i just find it to be a very useful technique okay so with that being said we can now move on to showing you some paintings and then the demo so here are some paintings that represent and really showcase dry brush work. Uh, I wanted to start with something that uh, you've probably never seen before, at least not here on YouTube. It's a process I painted on location, some buildings here in Tel Aviv. Um, and you can see dry brush everywhere here. It's very prevalent in this piece. So all of this texture on the trees with me using the brush in different uh, directions uh, to get that sort of... Uh, uh, you see this uh, sparkly look. Uh, all of these details here were done with a rather dry brush. The windows here you can see. Uh, so many small architectural details here uh, were also done with dry brush. Hopefully now you can see it a little better here as well. Um, all the bottom section of the painting is very much uh, reliant on dry brush because you get all of these sparkly empty areas and that's due to the paper's surface that hopefully uh, you can at least see some of um, and that creates a very interesting effect that you can uh, on the one hand create some focus with the sparkles on the other hand you can push things to the background because they're less defined so that's a really interesting uh, one way of using it also the shadows cast on the on the street uh, I also used a lot of dry brush for that uh, here's a painting I recently did and I think again this one you didn't uh, really get to see uh, the process of because I haven't uh, recorded it. So here dry brush is a little less dominant but you can see that here I decided to deliberately leave some of the sparkles uh, because I think it created an interesting effect of this wall in the shadow is still showing some light that uh, jumps off of it. Uh, we do have one very obvious uh, usage of dry brush here for the details of this street lamp that I think turned out beautiful. Um, and it, it just puts it in the context of the painting in a nice way, I think. Uh, here as well, we have some dry brush of this shadow. And the reason I used this is I wanted it to be less defined. I actually wanted this shadow to kind of move to the side and not be too dominant, too sharp and contrasty, like let's say this uh, triangle. So it's kind of very, very uh, roughly done and that's it. Uh, another final use that you'll see in some other examples as well is direction lines. So these pull you into the painting. It could be the sidewalk or the pavement or whatever it is or the street. Different elements on the street or on a highway even. Uh, but using dry brush can really help you put in those lines without having them be too dominant. Same for legs or objects in motion. It can be very helpful to do them with one quick stroke. Uh, that's a bit dry as well because that creates a, a sense of um, uh, a dynamic sense, let's say. Uh, even my, uh, my signature I put uh, in dry brush sometimes. So uh, now we have another example. This one I painted again on location a while back. This is about, I think, a year ago or a year and a half ago probably. Uh, and there's dry brush here everywhere. All of these 
some, well, some of these small windows, uh, the details on the car, the shadows on the street. These are all put in using dry brush and it's, it's just a nice contrast with the fluidity uh, of watercolor. On the one hand it flows and it merges like the sky, but on the other hand you get this harsh texture. Next up uh, we have this painting I did. I also have a video of this here on YouTube. Uh, so for to get the foliage effect and the leaves, you don't have to paint each and every individual leaf. You can just do one stroke and it gets all of these small details in. Same true for this part. Uh, same for the shadows or light in the foreground. So very prevalent with scenes that there are foliage and trees. Uh, here's one that you know, you, I have this process on YouTube as well, on location, one of my favorite videos, by the way. So first, a very obvious example is these windows on the building that I wanted to send to the background. Uh, so those are done in, in dry brush, some details of the palm tree, all of this foliage and shadows and textures. Uh, this, I deliberately use some very fast strokes so you can see some of the paper's texture, but I think the most obvious example would actually be the car uh, and all of the details that I pulled out of it using dry brush. So check it out. It's all very dry. And as I shown you before, also the directional lines are very prevalent in this scene as well. And if I were to use full lines, fully wet like this, for example, it'll be too much. Uh, it won't hint, it will actually state and you would you would read it as the uh, actual bricks uh, in the sidewalk and you don't want to do that sometimes, you just want them to feel like something that guides you through to the, uh, to the painting. So hopefully that's another good example. And finally we have this and I also have this process I believe here on YouTube. So the edges of the hair where I left some highlights, that was also done using dry brush, okay? Um, also here, next to the edges, I'll sometimes just get it in a quick, quick line, the shadows here, a lot of dry brush on areas that I don't want to pop and be very strong focal points, okay? So hopefully that makes sense and all of these examples help you better understand the essence of the technique. Now what we're gonna do is move everything aside and start painting and I'm gonna show you uh, the several factors in creating dry brush and, and just several ways of doing it. So let's get started with that. Okay, so now that you've seen some of my paintings that really, I believe, represent the idea of dry brush, uh, what I want to show you is actually how to do it, how to do the technique. I'm going to have two cameras, so one is my phone over there, and another one is the upper camera, and hopefully you'll be able to see everything. Now, the reason why, especially with this kind of video, it is important to have two cameras is I want you to see the mixing very well, because that's where all of the magic happens, okay? So the idea is it's all in the ratio of the uh, paint to water. So if I'm going to do this now and try and reawaken the paint, nothing will happen because I don't have any water to move it. So I'm going to take just a little bit of water and I'm going to start reawakening the paint. Now you can see by the way it looks on the palette that it will move quite a bit. So if I'm going to do this, you get a very even line, okay? If I want to really get the dry brush effect, I'm going to need the paint to be drier. So I'm with this well of water and paint that's very small, I'm expanding into areas that already have paint in them, thus increasing the consistency of paint. And then you see I start to get this dry brush effect, okay? And in editing, I'll zoom in on some of the details so you can uh, better see. But you see how I get this effect? Now, there are a lot of components that are responsible for this effect, and I'm going to break down all of them, but the very first and most important one is the ratio. Now, let's imagine, hypothetically, that you don't have anything here. So imagine my wells are clean, uh, which they never are. Uh, in order to get that dry brush effect, all you need is a little water on the brush, and I have my bucket here. Just dip it in a bit of water and clean it on the towel and then come into one of the wells of paint and grab a lot of paint, okay? Now you see this is still too much water, still too much water on the brush. So I actually have to clean up some of the, of the water and everything on the towel and then come back and it starts to develop that quality, okay? It just gets started with it. So now I can dry it a little more on the towel and you can see how I start to get some dry brush. That's the very basic technique, it has to do a lot with the consistency of the paint. Okay, now what a lot of people do is they 
they dip the, the, the brush into the water way too much and they don't dry it. So now it's kind of soaking wet and you can see it if I hold it to the light. And then they expect to be able to produce dry brush and it will never happen. Okay, it will happen in just a few moments. I'm going to show you how you can do it with a bit of a wetter brush, okay, depending on the angle you do. Uh, but generally speaking, if you want to work slowly and really get that effect with small strokes, the only way you'll be able to do it, and I'm going to show you, in fact, is to wipe it on the towel, try again. Wipe it again on the towel, try again. And with every wipe on the towel, you get rid of some water. Now, at some point, you're going to get rid of the paint as well. So you do have to renew uh, your paint. So I'm going to grab some phthalo blue here. Now, I won't be able to get a dry brush. I'm going to clean it on the palette. Try again, try again until you get the hang of it. Okay, you really have to get rid of as much water as possible but still have just enough to keep it moving okay so that's it now uh, if you will grab a lot of paint and add that to the mixture then now you have more paint than water and it'll be a little easier to get that effect and you have darker paint okay so I'm gonna wipe a bit of it still and wipe a little more and then you start to get that effect okay so that's in terms of the water uh, to, uh, to paint ratio. And just using that component, you can create beautiful dry brush effects. Now we're gonna talk about something else, and that is the angle of the brush and the direction in which you move it. So let me show you an example. Let's say I have this much water and, and paint on the brush, and I can't really, well, I can a bit, but if I go slowly, I won't be able to produce dry brush, as you can see here, not as much. But if I change the angle, then you see I just squeeze the brush on the paper, and hopefully you can see this in the uh, iPhone uh, angle, and you can, can get dry brush, okay? More pressure on the paper will lead to uh, a stronger dry brush effect, and hopefully you can see this well, okay? So that's one thing. Now, another thing is actually the direction in which you let the brush work. So let me show you an example. Uh, if I go against the direction, notice the effects I'm getting against the, the natural direction. A lot of people are worried they'll ruin their brushes and that's, that's a fair, uh, legitimate concern, but to me I don't care. I want my tools to serve my needs, okay, not the other way around. So this pushing against, and you'll see me often do it when I paint, I push against the natural direction of the brush and that really makes that effect. Now, uh, another thing you want to take into consideration is the type of brush will affect it as well. So, so far I've been using one with strong spring. With these brushes, really the angle can add a lot of dry brush effect, but with softer brushes, like this is my silver black velvet, here the, the direction will be even more noticeable because you can, uh, you see, torture the brush a bit and get this very uh, texture-based stroke, okay? You see what I mean? But again, the basis for this everything I'm showing you is the water to paint ratio and if you can't get a dry brush uh, effect that's because the water to paint ratio also may be incorrect okay so you want to make sure because let's say I'm, I'm gonna use a very wet uh, wash here okay it's gonna be very hard getting a dry brush unless the texture of the paper is really noticeable okay you see what I mean so uh, the more it, it, it is emptied of water the more the drier it gets and then you can get that effect but if you're using a very wet wash you have no prayer of getting it unless maybe you go really extreme on the angle and the pressure and the direction okay so all of these go into consideration when doing this kind of work now let me move this just a bit and now I'm going to talk about my next point. So we talked about the water to paint ratio. We talked about the angle and the, the, the direction of the movement. Now let's talk about speed. This is extremely visible when using uh, my rigger brush. So this is a very small brush that's meant to do the small details. So let's say I'm going to just grab a bit of paint here and it's good for wires running across, things of that nature. It's really good for that. Now the speed of line has a strong influence on the dry brush effect. So let me just show you. If I were to do this very slow line, you see it's a very even, unbroken line, okay? Now, of course, the more I'll do it, the brush gets empty and then it'll start producing this dry brush effect. However, uh, in its basis, in its basic form, if I go slow, when it's filled with water and paint, it will produce a very even line. But if I go fast, the line starts to get broken, okay? 
Another thing with this one in particular is the angle. If you're, if you're going to use this kind of angle, you'll get a very even line. But if you use this angle, you see how you start getting this dry effect, okay? So again, water to paint ratio is key, but there are many different ways of achieving this effect or, um, or um, strengthening the effect, okay? Making it more uh, prominent by the angle you use, the direction you push the brush, and so on, okay? And let me show you my brushes. So I've got uh, this one that's a little more, has a little more spring to it. Uh, these, the silver black velvet, are a little more soft. And this regular brush just has a very small group of hair. So these all will function very differently. I also have this brush, for example, the bamboo brush that I showed you. These will all uh, function very differently, okay? And you have to take that into consideration. Now, what I want to show you is how I'm using the dry brush to finalize uh, maybe an effect. So I'm going to put the, the, the palette here so you can see it. And I'm going to create a very, very simple drawing of a car. Okay, so it's going to be very uh, loose. And I'm not basing it on any reference. So hopefully the result is going to be okay. So we have this kind of a body of the car. Here we have the tail lights. And then the lower section. And it connects to some kind of a shadow. This should be a little smaller. So now we have this very basic structure. I'm going to paint it very uh, basically as well. So I'm going to put in some uh, darker area here, but not too dark. And I'm going to mute it down just a little bit. Okay, so we get this uh, back glass or I don't know what you'd call it, shield thing. Now this part uh, around the trunk should be a little lighter, so I'm going to leave it light. And then we have the shadows at the very back. I'm going to add a bit of red here, as you can see. Now there's a reason I do all of that, because what I'm going to show you is how I finalize this sketch by using dry brush, okay? And hopefully it'll make sense to you. So I'm filling in all the back. Now because we do have those tail lights, I'm going to just put them in here very gently, just an indication so you can know where they are. And there's probably more details to be done uh, wet and wet, but I'm going to keep this to a bare minimum. So the bottom part is what matters. And I'm connecting it to the road using the tires, okay? Putting in the shadow on the road. And there we have a very, very, very basic car, okay? Uh, there are the, the mirrors here as well. Probably important to get those, okay? Now what we're going to do is allow this for a few moments to dry. I'll probably also add some background actually, just real quick. And then what we're going to do is let this car dry. And I'm going to show you how with some uh, very simple uh, dry brush effect, I can bring out its shape and make it look even more awesome, realistic, uh, and, and just good looking, okay? Uh, because it really is responsible for a lot of the effects that, I'm, that, I'm, that I tend to achieve. Uh, so I'm just filling in these areas. So there is, imagine a background, it could be anything. And then there's the road. So I'm gonna stop this where the road is. There's this very gentle highlight on the mirrors and I'm, I'm giving you already a, just a very quick time demo, um, quick fast uh, demo. The bottom should be a little darker so I will put more emphasis on that. I'm just choosing colors at random here really, uh, just having fun. I think this is the, the, the most fun part. There's an exhaust here maybe, here as well. I think this is the best part of painting. You just do things uh, that are enjoyable. Now, of course, I could add a bit of uh, details here, wet and wet, but we're gonna allow this some time to dry. This part should probably be lower. Okay, and now it's time to stop uh, messing around with it. I'm gonna let it dry a few moments and then come back with a dry brush. Okay, so the paint now is mostly dry, at least in the places that matter. Uh, and I want to show you uh, how I start adding some details and interest using dry brush. And again, a lot of it has to do with the consistency. So now this is too much water. I'm going to clean some of that on the towel. And then I'll experiment here. And you can experiment on a test page before you start working on the real deal. Uh, and then I'm going to just start adding some. This is still too much paint on the brush. So I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm just gonna add some very um, minor gentle details. So usually there's a strong shadow here in this area of the car. The logo of the car can also be added in this way. 
uh, this part as well. Sometimes I'll do that with the rigor brush, sometimes depending on the mood and what seems to be uh, fitting my needs. Uh, there's uh, the uh, tail lights here that I can just uh, indicate very gently at least their, their edge where they end. Um, what else can I put here? Uh, maybe a very gentle shadow around this area. Uh, a bit around here and again depending on the control you need and and the different um, the way that will be comfortable for you uh, you will choose maybe a different brush maybe it'll go with the rigor to get some finer details but as you can see here really this is a just a good way of getting in some details now I really dried the brush so it has uh, lost some of its tip but that's still fine uh, so yeah this is it I don't want to overdo it because it is one of those things that are rather easy to overdo uh, but hopefully that provides you, and I can do it with red as well, uh, so hopefully that provides you uh, with my general at least approach to uh, dry brush, gonna sh uh, darken it with more red, uh, and how it can help bring out the shape of the object you're painting. I don't see uh, too much need to, to add too many more details here, it looks fine. Maybe you could add some other... Um, kind of hint at some tail lights, but you get the point. Uh, when you have a first wash that's very flowy and it all merges together, coming back with this kind of an effect and darkening some areas, but still not having them too prominent, I'm not coming back and doing these kinds of lines, okay? I'm coming back, I'm not doing these very well, um, very prominent bold lines. I'm going for something that's so different than that, just small details, you see here? Uh, so when you do that, it can really bring out the shape of the object properly. Um, so hopefully that makes sense, and hopefully this video helped you, showed you some examples from my own work. Uh, even the, the recent uh, paintings I did, small paintings of cars that I did, are really uh, relevant for this. Let me show you. So here you can see almost uh, each and every one of those has a bit of dry brush here. It's very gentle and mild, it didn't really do it here. But here you get these uh, lines, the, the tail light. Uh, even in this small one I used some dry brush. Here there's uh, a lot of dry brush but it's very subtle because I went back over it and added some shadows. Uh, but you can see this is very prevalent in, in, in many of my works and in many artists' works. Um, so hopefully that gives you a better idea of how to do it, why to do it, um, and the different ways to control it. And with that being said, we can wrap up this video. So this is it for this one. I want to first thank you so much for watching. Um, uh, hopefully the paintings that I showed you give you a better idea again of the very practical application of dry brush. Then the demo explains all of the different factors, things to learn, stuff like that. Um, and finally, I think the demo with the car, I could have chosen a better example because there's just not a lot of details to add there. You know, sometimes you go way overboard with the dry brush and I didn't want to do that. I wanted to avoid uh, doing too much. Um, but in any case, uh, hopefully that gives you a better understanding of how to do it. Now, two more points just to wrap it up. First, the type of paper will have strong influence of the result. So experiment with multiple papers and see what you like the most. My personal favorite is cold press. That's right in the middle. Uh, on the softer side, you have the hot press, which is smooth. And on the other hand, you have the rough. Rough is too much for me. It's too strong of a texture and I don't like working with it as much. Um, and I will say this, even with hot pressed paper that's smooth, you can still produce dry brush effects, okay? You don't have to have a texture or the texture can be very gentle and you can still exploit it. That's the first point. Second point, a lot of this comes down to your stylistic choice. You may not enjoy this effect as much as I do, so you may lose, use it uh, less frequently, okay? And that's perfectly fine. What I'm trying to do is give you another tool that you can use if and when you want to, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. I don't want you to feel forced to now use it in every uh, painting you do. I, in particular, uh, love the way it looks in certain scenes, certain settings, so I use it, uh, depending on the scene, I may use it a lot or minimally, okay? So I want you to develop that same experimentation mindset. So again, I hope you enjoyed this video and also wanted to once again wish you a happy 2019. Uh, this is the first video of 2019, which makes me very happy and excited. Hopefully you celebrated, now you rest. Um, and I just want to wish you really all the best and thank you so much for watching. If this is the first video of me you watch or uh, you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to subscribe. I have tons of videos like this that are oriented towards 
towards specific techniques. I have videos that are more general. I have painting processes. I have uh, talks about um, art and creativity, different discussions, um, also series like the paint show and painting masters. So there's a lot to find here for anyone who watches. Uh, so I'm very grateful for that. If you want to work on your drawing skills, be sure to check out uh, the link to my beginner's drawing course in the description box uh, below. I think you'll find it very helpful. And if you have any questions or you want me to talk about anything in particular, let me know again in a comment below. I'm trying to make this channel better for you and have more things that you will enjoy. Okay, so thank you so much and I will see you again in another vid real soon.